Кристо. Ambitions. Requiescat in pace. much meeting you here. I will be brief. Just a name. Cesare Borgia. Ezio, he is the last man you would want to cross. I intend to do far more. Tell me of his ambitions. Some tyrants are made, infected by greed and vanity. But some men are bred to be tyrants. Cesare Borgia plotted his bloody ascendance the moment his brother gained the Pope's favor. Cesare was a mere cardinal, Juan the, the Captain General of the Church. <laughs> Brother, my imagination failed to capture the splendor of this district when you described it. Surely the Captain General is not afraid to get his boots dirty. <laughs> it's not my boots that worry me. These horse. Courtesans, please. They are clean? Clean enough. <laughs> Come, I will introduce you to Fiora. They fished Juan's body from the bottom of the Tevere River, leaving Rodrigo without a captain. As captain general, Cesare surrounded himself with like-minded despots, cruel and effective men. Ramiro Dorco, Cesare's sadist, he sent nearly a sixth of his subjects to the gallows. Oliverotto de Fermo, who once invited Fermo's most influential citizens to a banquet and casually slaughtered them. His own uncle was among the dead. Vitellozzo Vitelli, Cesare's syphilitic wild dog, unleashed when terrible examples were to be made. Together, these men conquered Romagna for their Borgia master. But soon their subjects began to rebel. Cesare's response? First, he butchered Dorco, a gift for the people of Cesare. Cesare shifted all blame to his generals. He owned Romagna. He no longer required their brutality. For their lives. Torco's death must have panicked the others. It did. The remaining generals soon conspired against him. They had their victories. They even took some of Cesare's land. Cesare accepted their every demand. They would return to his service. All would be forgiven. Months later, Cesare threw a dinner in their honor. Friends, I thank you for delivering Romagna into my hands. But now I must shed my bloody gloves.
I never wished you any harm, Cesare. It was entirely Vitellozzo's plan. <laughs> no. Your sacrifice will prove invaluable to me. Both Cesare's allies and enemies praised his brilliant move against the conspirators. His cunning has bought him more power than you can imagine, Ezio. Italia is well within his grasp. His influence will mean nothing when he faces me alone. I will stop him. I nearly forgot. Here. Grazie, my friend. You will see me soon. He is expecting you. Go on. Are the designs ready, Messere da Vinci? Corruption reigns in Roma. Tyranny has plagued her for too long. My brotherhood will shift the balance of power. We will liberate her. I am Ezio Auditore, and like my father before me, I am an assassin. What we try to do with Ascendance is really to bring something new to the franchise. We had a great tool to develop more of a, you know, of a new medium in a way, perfect for digital distribution, which is animated short. Doing an animated short obviously allows you to explore a cin more cinematic medium. You can tell a story more succinctly. We position ourselves right in between AC2 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. In Brotherhood, Ezio will encounter his most dangerous adversary ever. And um, he encounters him at the height of his power when he has total control over Rome and he's kind of, he's persecuting everyone there. And so the question is, who is Cesare? And Assassin's Creed Ascendance answers it. Assassin's Creed Ascendance basically is the story of uh, Ezio and Cesare Borgia's rise to power. Ezio is trying to find out about the villain, Cesare, and he uh, doesn't have very much info, so he goes and talks to a contact of his. And so this informant, secret informant, will tell him how uh, Cesare managed to um, control almost all Italy. There's a huge cliffhanger at the end that, that you'll have to play the game to resolve. We are not telling the story of the game. We are developing new stories and creating new points of entry for people to come in in our universe. We have the animated short, we have the game, we have a novel, we have a comic book series, and they all interrelate. And so it's very important to us that the story of Assassin's Creed be told in pieces through each of these media. The main challenge here is that we had to do something that we haven't done yet here at Ubisoft. We wanted to make sure that the word convergence is not only a buzzword, we pushed it a little bit further by making sure that whatever is being developed in a game can be used in another medium.
For the conception of Assassin's Creed Ascendance, we've built a tool to extract high resolution shots from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood in order to build all the backgrounds. We're using this, the, the game engine, we're extracting the backgrounds and we're painting on top of them. So we're gonna have a really rich environment. The efficiency of this tool is born from the collaboration of an artistic team and an engineering team. We've worked and developed the story with the team. We are taking the data from the game. Similarly, we share with the game uh, sound engineers, music, sound effects. So even though we, the result, the visual results from uh, the game and uh, from uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Ascendance are quite different. The gamer will have no problem recognizing either the characters or the environment. Our goal is to bridge video game technology and film production. The toughest part here is to find a style, an artistic style, which was really satisfying for everyone. general direction is to create a look and feel that uh, reminds us very much of the paintings of the um, era. The Renaissance era where great and famous painters, uh, Da Vinci, we can name Botticelli, we can name a, a lot of them, and we wanted to make sure to have that painterly feel as if um, looking at a painting, if you will, um, but in in three dimension with a certain depth. So we have a style definitely connected with its era. The, the way it's treated fits with the, the time period actually of the game and, and the story, which is, uh, which is complementary to the game. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a success for one major element. We are through to what the Assassin's Creed universe is. And I think that all the fans with, uh, who like history and action will be served. It is a Ubisoft product that will have the stamp of quality as any other product in the Assassin's Creed universe.